balancing chemical reactions. That'll be the topic of this lesson in my high school chemistry playlist. Now, this is just the first lesson in a whole chapter on chemical reactions. After this lesson, we'll move on to talking about the various types of chemical reactions, and then we'll spend two lessons focusing on two of the more important types, uh, oxidation reduction reactions, of which single replacement are a very common type, uh, and then a whole lesson on double replacement reactions. Now, if this is your first time seeing one of my lessons, my name is Chad. Welcome to my channel, where I'm just trying to help you learn science and make it enjoyable. Now, this is my high school chemistry playlist. I'll be releasing these lessons throughout the 2020-21 school year. So if you don't want to miss one, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notifications. You'll be notified every time I produce one of these. So balancing chemical reactions, this is one of those lessons that students really, really heavily associate with their high school chemistry experience. And we'll spend a little time here. So, but the idea is that all of the elements, so on the reactant side are gonna be balanced with the corresponding ones on the product side. So in a chemical reaction, so all of your atoms are gonna be conserved. All the atoms you have on the reactant side are gonna still be present on the product side, just in different combinations. We're gonna bond different elements to different things, and that's what actually is happening in a chemical reaction. But no new atoms are produced, and no new atoms are destroyed in a chemical reaction. And that's kind of the principle behind why we're able to balance chemical reactions. We just have to balance all the atoms of each type of element. So in this case, we're gonna take sodium, in this case, we're going to take solid sodium metal. We often put a little phase right after the element or compound to show you what phase is. It's usually solid, liquid, gas, or aqueous if it's dissolved in water. So and in this case, we're going to mix solid sodium metal with chlorine gas so, and make sodium chloride, in this case, solid sodium chloride table salt. So, and you can do this, and it's a lovely, cool reaction. You mix uh, solid sodium with chlorine gas, and it actually is highly exothermic, and we'll learn what that means later, but lots of heat and actually flames are given off in the process, and the result, though, is just to make something fairly benign salt. Now, to balance this chemical reaction, so you can pretty much start anywhere you want to, and we'll learn later on, though, that there are some reactions where you better be careful on where you start, and there are certain places where you don't want to start, but in this one, it doesn't really matter, so, uh, and we'll see why some matter and some don't, and I'll explain that later as well. So with one sodium atom here, one sodium atom here, all looks good, but we move on to chlorine, and on the reactant side, we've got two chlorine atoms. On the product side, we've only got one, and so to make sure that we have the same number, we're going to have to put a coefficient here, and so once you're to the point of actually, you've got all your chemical species in reaction, you're just adding coefficients in front of potentially some or all of your different chemical species. Now, the problem though is that now the chlorines are balanced. So I got two chlorines on this side, and since I have two of the entire NaCl, that also gives me two chlorines on this side. But now I've also got two sodiums on this side. I only had one on this side. And so that's going to force me to put a two over here as well. So, and at this point, this chemical reaction is now balanced. So two sodiums, and when there's no coefficient placed in front of a species, Species, it's implied that there's a one there. You don't typically write the one, but it's implied that that means one Cl2, and that's going to give two NaCl's, and we've got conservation of all the atoms of both types of elements. All right, in this next one we're going to balance, we're going to mix N2 gas with H2 gas, two of our diatomic elements, to produce ammonia gas. The NH3 here is called ammonia. So, and, and here I'm producing ammonia gas. If you actually cool this down to a super low temperature, you might actually be below ammonia's boiling point and make ammonia liquid. So, but in this case, I give it to you as ammonia gas, and it's not something you had to predict. It's right there on your handout and stuff. I'm giving that to you. So I didn't want you to think that you had to predict that in some way, shape, or form. But the truth is, if you carried this reaction out lower than negative 33 degrees Celsius at one atmosphere, then this might be a liquid instead. So, but cool, in this case, everything in the gas phase, and if we look at balancing elements, and this is another example where it doesn't really matter where we start. And so if I start with nitrogens here, so two nitrogens on this side, I've only got one nitrogen on this side. So I'm gonna have to put a two here to make that work. So, and now the nitrogens are balanced, but the hydrogens are not. And so in this case, with two of the entire ammonia, that means if each ammonia has got three hydrogens and I've got two of the whole thing, I've got six hydrogen atoms on this side. And to get six on these, this side, they come two by two by two. I'm gonna need to add three hydrogen molecules on this side. And so we've got one nitrogen again with no coefficients implied there's one of these, plus three H2s goes to two NH3s. And you'll find that we've got two nitrogens on both sides, six hydrogen atoms on both sides, and we've got another balanced chemical reaction. All right, so I started us off with a couple of easier examples to kind of get our feet wet here. So, but we're gonna ramp it up a little ways here into this one, which is definitely gonna be a little more challenging. 
Now in this one, one we got four different chemical species instead of just three like the last two. So, but there's one other unique thing about this that's gonna make this a little more challenging. Uh, and that is that one of the elements shows up in two different places on the same side of the reaction arrow. Now, the left-hand side of the reaction arrow is the reaction side, the right-hand side, the product side. And if you look at carbon, only shows up in this one place on the whole left-hand side of the arrow, the reactant side, and only right here on the product side. Well, that's great. That'd be a great place to start. Same thing for hydrogen, only shows up in one place on the reactant side and in only one place on the product side of the arrow, another great place to start. But oxygen, unfortunately, so it shows up in two places on the product side. Now, only one place on the reactant side, and that's good, but showing up in more than one place on the same side of the reaction means it's gonna be a pain in the butt to balance. If we started balancing this out with oxygen, it would be nearly impossible to come out with the right answer. You'd find out that you just keep going back and forth and you can never get it to work out right and life would suck. So first thing you wanna do then is recognize where you don't start balancing a chemical reaction. If you ever have a species that shows up in more than one place on the same side of the arrow, make it the last thing you do. So in this case, I'm gonna start with carbon and we got two carbons here. So I'll put a two right here, coefficient of two right there to make sure the carbons are balanced. And again, we're saving oxygen for the end, so let's do hydrogen next. And I've got six hydrogens here, so in this case, to make sure the hydrogens get balanced, I'd have to put a three right here. So, and now I've got six H atoms on both sides of the arrow. And now we're gonna run into a little problem here. So, cause now that I've put coefficients here and here, the auctions on this side are set. And two of the CO2s, which have two auctions each, is gonna be four auction atoms. And then three waters, which have one auction each, will be another three auction atoms for a total of seven auction atoms. That's an odd number. Unfortunately, over here, the auctions come two by two by two. And so to get seven total atoms is not gonna be a nice round even whole number here. So, and I shouldn't say even, I guess, in this context, just whole number, it's not gonna be a whole number. So, but it would be seven halves or three and a half, or if you wanted to write 3.5, you could do that. So because three and a half times two would be seven atoms and this works. So however, oftentimes we just hate putting fractions in the middle of, of balanced chemical reactions. And so it, one, it's technically not incorrect here. So however, oftentimes we'll phrase it that if balance the following chemical reaction, make sure that all coefficients are whole numbers. Well, if you come out with a case like this, if you've got a half for a fraction, then double everything all the way through to fix that. And so in this case, 2C2H6 and doubling seven halves would just be plain old seven. O2 gas, doubling the CO2s gets me to four, and doubling the waters gets me a total of six. Cool. And so technically either one of these is technically correct. It all depends on how they ask the question. For a high school chemistry class or even a college chemistry class, the most common way they're gonna ask it though is to ask for all the coefficients to be whole numbers. Uh, as is the case for the bottom one here. And again, it doesn't matter which element you pick, they're gonna balance out. So here I've got four carbon atoms, here I've got four carbon atoms. So here I've got a total of 12 hydrogen atoms, here I've got a total of 12 hydrogen atoms, and then here we've got 14 oxygen atoms. Here, four times two is eight, plus another six gets me a total of 14 oxygen atoms. Once again, we've got another balanced chemical reaction. But again, this is one of the more challenging examples, and again, it was challenging up front because oxygen showed up in two places on the same side, but challenging at the end as well because we had to double the whole thing through if we were hoping to avoid any fractions as coefficients. Now, if you found this lesson helpful, consider giving me a like and a share. Pretty much the most important things you can do to support the channel. And if you're looking for plenty of practice or if you're looking for the study guides that go with this lesson, check out my premium course on chadsprep.com.